So you guys remember my Axiotron mod book that we accidentally broke temporarily in my last episode, right? You also notice these two systems right in front of me right here, right? Well, this might be a little clue what I've just bought and I had to put on credit. Meet my ModBook Pro by ModBook Incorporated. This is the ModBook Incorporated ModBook Pro. Let's go check it out. Anyway, I'm Greg Redkin of Redkin Mods, and welcome to this episode where we will be talking about my ModBook Pro. Now, these ModBook Pros are pretty neat, and the history is kind of interesting. Uh, we all know about Axiotron and what they were trying to do with these white MacBooks, making them into these things here, which are kind of janky and very easy to break, as I found out. <laughs> but in about 2010, the company went bankrupt. And when they went bankrupt, they decided to reincorporate as ModBook Incorporated. It's the same people, different company. So it went from Axiotron to ModBook Incorporated, where they introduced the ModBook Pro. And this ModBook Pro is actually based off of a mid-2011-ish 13-inch uh, MacBook Pro, which makes it ex extremely rare. And why do I say that? These were introduced around mid-2012. So I would say they made these maybe a month before they decided to switch to the mid-2012 models. And of course, you know, the mid-2012 models are a lot better. So this is a super rare model. And these didn't sell very well because they were extremely expensive. And um, I basically put this thing on credit because it was affordable enough where I'll eventually work off the credit card debt. I couldn't pass it up. This thing came with everything you needed, and um, it came with all the original parts, all the original tools, everything except the doc documentation, and uh, probably a carrying case if it came with one. It came with everything else, though, and it even came with all the original hardware. This has been modified by the original owner, and because of that, you know, we can still s convert it back to the original way it was, but I was thinking, since we have the formerly known as world's fastest 2012, mid-2012, 13-inch MacBook Pro, I'm getting tongue-tied now. As, since we already had this, I thought maybe we could put this in this. Now, even though this is a super rare model, I'm going to keep all the original parts to it so it can be converted back if possible, if ever wanted to be. Like if I wanted to sell it or something, I could convert it back. But in today's episode, we're not going to be making this into the world's fastest ModBook Pro. That's going to be the next episode, which will probably be coming up in a few weeks. But in today's episode, we'll be going over what this thing is and how it works and just having some fun with it. And I'll also show you how it was actually shipped to me, which is kind of weird and funny at the same time. So let's get to it. Okay, so when I got this system, this is how it was packed. It came in a large box with some paper wrapping in it and a, an iPad air box and a MacBook air box. I thought at first I had been scammed. <laughs> But I opened up the iPad Air box first, which was taped shut at the time. And I still haven't even unpacked this, by the way. And this is everything it came with. This is the original hard drive cable from ModBook Incorporated. Actually, this is the optical drive cable. Um, that's neat. So you got that. You also have this tool kit with the original, an, another optical drive cable in it, some extra screws, all that stuff, so you could take this apart and put it back together. Came with the original power supply here, which I still haven't even looked at. It's a 60 watt. It's cool. And of course the 
US adapter, which I just dropped on the floor. I'll pick that up in a second. Then I realized after I'd already looked at all that, that <laughs> it says Modbook Pro in this MacBook Air box. And when I opened it after cutting the tape, this is what I saw. The original owner had put in an extra SSD into it, taking the original optical drive out. This is the original one. It supposedly still works. It's cool. It also came with the original backup. Now, this is not the original drive. The This model actually came with a Modbook branded 128 gig SSD, which is still in it. So this guy backed it up to this, and uh, actually this might still be the original drive, but it does have a Modbook SSD in it, so it's, it's a little confusing, but still. This is the whole backup of 1010, and it's bootable. It came with two styluses. I left one in the system right now, and these are literally identical to the styluses that were in the Axiotron ones. It also came with the original tips. And as you notice, some of them are spring-loaded. There's this black um, one and then these transparent ones, and uh, well, translucent. And they just have different touch feels. And then you've got this piece of metal here, which I think slides onto the stylus to hold a button in place or something. Not really sh sure what that's for. But anyway, after I unwrapped it, that's when I was greeted with the Modbook Pro, which was already 50% charged and still hasn't been plugged in since I got it. It powers right up. So let's look at it. Now here's my Axiotron Modbook, which is a janky, plasticky, kind of crappy melted heap of mess right now and you know it's just spaced off a plastic macbook it's not a very quality unit here it does what it needs to do it's a neat system but it's just not quality compared to this my modbook pro by modbook incorporated and this thing is in a complete black aluminum enclosure at least I believe it's aluminum. It's black, and it looks really, really good. We currently had it plug in, plugged in here, but we'll unplug it. It's charged right now, mostly. And that is the system right there. This is the Modbook Pro. And the case is not in perfect shape, but it's still in pretty decent shape. And um, you can still see that it... It's, it's based off of a MacBook Pro here. And let's go over the ports real quick. We've got the Gigabit Ethernet, FireWire 800, Thunderbolt 1, USB 2. But if you notice, there's only one USB 2 port. The other one is blocked off. And uh, I guess that's where the screen plugs in, which is very interesting. Then we have an SD card slot, the audio jack, the power button, and then this button that I have no clue what it's for at all. Don't know why or what it is. Um, I clicked it. It doesn't seem to do anything. It looks like a crossed out raindrop, which is it's, it's weird. But anyway, the other difference that I've noticed on this, other than being metal, is the stylus is on the top instead of the bottom on this unit. We'll hit the power button. And when you boot it up, this is what you see. The qu quick clicks board will uh, come right on there, and it will just be ready to log in. So let's log it in here. It will log in, as we can see here. It will open up Firefox for some odd reason. Let's get this, get down here where I can help film here. All right, so here we go. 
we can minimize quick clicks here. Move that down here. Close that out. And as we look here, it is a late 2011 model here. Um, and it just works. It has been maxed out with 16 gigs of DDR3 from the previous owner. And it's just a 13-inch MacBook Pro inside of a touchscreen unit here. And it works quite well. This is a lot more functional, smoother device. Everything works a lot better than the other one did. And the weird thing about the Quick Clicks keyboard here, if you look here, it's got a keyboard brightness button shortcut. There, there's no keyboard. So I don't know why they put those there. But this works the way it should. That should bring, bring up the different desktops, I guess. Let's, let's go back here. Go, go, go back. It's, there we go. Uh, volume. Brightness. Well, sometimes it has problems registering clicks. I think the stylus tip's just worn out. In fact, I flipped it backwards so it would respond better. This is a very smooth experience. You could draw with this. It would work quite well. And if we open back up the full keyboard here, and there's the keyboard. Open up Preferences. And the only thing I don't like about Quick Click's keyboard, even though it's useful, is it's always on top, which sometimes gets annoying when you're trying to do things and the window pops up behind it and you have to hit that button. Like when I was trying to calibrate it. Uh, right here, when we hit calibrate, I had the keyboard down here last time. We don't this time, so this should just work. We're calibrated. It works. So, yeah. This is the ModBook Pro as it is right now. Previous owner updated it to the latest OS that it's officially supported, which is High Sierra. And uh, it, it works quite well. I want to make this the world's fastest, though. But there's some things about this that makes it quite neat and useful in today's world still. Let's talk about that. So we will open up Firefox. We'll open up YouTube. Minimize. Put that down here. It makes a really good tablet to watch stuff on. And this is streaming in 1440p right now. It's really sharp, really responsive. It can't do 4K very well, as we can see. Really it's actually of, uh, not doing awful, when I bought this but it, yeah, it, it's more happy in 1440 right now. When we upgrade this to a mid-2012 spec, it will work a lot better, especially with a quad core in it. So, But yeah, it works. Everything seems to work fine in it. One of the biggest sales ever. I'm getting an ad there. Go away. Go away. There we go. It works. I'm really happy with this thing. It works really well. Before we finish this video, though, I want to open up on the back of it and show you the insides of it, and then we'll wrap up the video. I was reading the bottom text of this and found this quite interesting. It talks about how this ModBook Pro is an enclosure conversion kit that transforms an Apple MacBook Pro model A1278 notebook-style computer into a tablet-style computer. And then it gives information about what Apple's ratings were, and uh, gives info on the trademarks, which I thought was quite interesting that they uh, would put that on the case 
Also, I just really love how these ports are marked on here. Uh, it's it's engraved in. It's got the serial number and all that stuff. It's just a very clean design. Okay, so here's the inside of it. It's got Modbook Pro SSD in it. And from what I can tell, the previous owner actually put what looks like a hard drive in it for storage. I thought it was an SSD. It explains why it sounds like a hard drive when it's running. <laughs> but anyway, it's weird. He, he had an extra Modbook ribbon cable. This is a special Modbook ribbon cable. Um, everything has been moved out sideways a little bit further, so they could put this hardware here in, uh, or this bracket. I'm, I'm not sure what that is. It's different. But because of that, they needed a longer ribbon cable, so they made one. So that's a very rare, easy-to-break thing there, I'm sure. Then this ribbon cable goes to... I don't know what. <laughs> uh, it's, I don't have a clue what that is. It looks like, okay, it's plugged into the keyboard. And uh, this is this is must be for, okay, this is the power button. And um, I guess the electronics for the touch touch screen. And um, it's, it's pretty neat. Now this drive that I think he gave me was the one he was using for a while, I guess, and he backed it up on that and then upgraded it to, I think this is a one terabyte SSD. But this is the inside of a Modbook Pro. And uh, it actually looks really easy to uh, swap the board in, which uh, I'm hoping that will be the case because the 2011 boards are the same as the 2012 boards, except the display cable is slightly different. So um, you can still plug this into a 2012, but you've got to modify it a little bit, which I'm a little hesitant over, uh, because this is actually a custom cable also. So it's going to be a crapshoot if I want to really do this, because um, it's, it's a little worrisome doing it. And I still don't know what this button here is for, but yeah, it's... It's it's a cool system. It's a lot better built. Everything's metal in it. Uh, it's very sturdy. Uh, I really hope that I can do something about all the weird dents in this. Like this reverse dent here, which looks like it came from something over here. From the fan, I guess. You know. Try to get this case back to a little better shape than it is in right now and uh you know it'd be a lot better but yeah here it is it's it does what it needs to do and it looks pretty cool doing it too this is a system that um it's it's, it's really cool i really like the design of it uh it's too bad it was too well way way overpriced and um yeah Anyway, let's finish wrapping up the video. So yeah, guys, that is my ModBook Pro. And we've got a lot of exciting things planned for it. Now, before we talk about what those are, which we have been talking about in the video already, but uh, I want to address this ModBook. This ModBook was beat to heck. Everything I did to it is fixable. So it's not a big deal if it's broken right now. Um, and the previous owner just did not take care of it. It's in mod books, the Axiotron ones are rare, but they're a lot more plentiful than these. So modifying one isn't really that big of a loss. Um, and of course it's all reversible. Um, I'll have the original parts if I ever want to reverse it back. I just wanted to customize it. This right here, which works perfectly right now, has a little drawback of it being a late 2011 model, which means it doesn't support metal and it can't run the latest OS with 
metal acceleration. I want to run metal acceleration on this. Everything I'm going to be doing to this system will be reversible. And, um, you know, it, the, it, it's, it's going to be okay. I'm not going to ruin the originality because I'll keep all the original parts. And if I ever want to convert it back, I can. But I want to make this the world's fastest at, um, Modbook Incorporated, Modbook Pro. And so we're going to do that with my old MacBook Pro. And uh, I think it's going to be fun. In fact, we may even make it faster in the future because Colin wants to actually do the SSD mod on it to uh, enable NVMe support, which would be really neat. Uh, we'd lose Thunderbolt on it, but uh, other than that, you know, we'll have NVMe support on it, which will make it even quicker. And um, that's the reason why the um, mid-2012 MacBook Pro I have was formerly known as the world's fastest, because he built a second one, which has NVMe support, which means mine's slower now. Uh, so it was formerly known as, but if we put that board in this, this will be the world's fastest mod, mod book pro. And I'm looking forward to doing that. And I hope you are too. And, uh, we will be getting to that very soon. So, uh, between this and my Mac pro series, uh, which I have got a surprise coming in the mail for you. We're working on season four of the Mac Pro series right now. And I said that was the last season. It's not going to be now. This system right here was the most expensive used Mac I've ever bought. And um, it's quite costly. I just bought the, let's see here, second most expensive um, Mac I've ever bought that's supposedly new. So, um, yeah. There's going to be a season five of the Mac Pro series as a spoiler alert. They won't be coming for a long time, but we will be doing an unboxing on this channel very soon um, to get ready for that in the future. But until then, that's the end of the day's video for this system here, the ModBook Pro. And I hope you guys are excited to what I'm going to be doing with it. Don't forget that, guys, I do have a Patreon if you'd like to support me. There'll be a link at the end of the video in the description below. And also, we have channel memberships if you just want to do it that way. Either way helps me out equally, and you'll see these videos at least a day early. Uh, sometimes earlier than that when I film these things in mass, I just upload them all. And um, this thing works incredibly well. I mean... When the stylus tip works properly, oh, I, I didn't know you could resize that. I don't know how I did that. But <laughs> when the stylus tip works perfect, properly, this is more reactive than this screen. Um, so this is a really neat system, and I can't wait to be running Sonoma on it. So, yeah, look forward to that. Anyway, guys, that's the end of today's video, and this has been Arcane Mods video.